Hello fellow homebrewers, JP here, and I want to introduce to you the brand new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Series available at More Beer. More Beer sells the highest standard in homebrewing equipment, and the Brewbuilt Conicals are just that. They're made from mere polished 304 stainless steel, and they come with loads of features that you and I have been looking for. They have a full 2-inch bottom dump valve, which will eliminate your clogging issues, while the sturdy base includes four reinforced legs, just like those big pro tanks do. More Beer also carries the Brewbuilt line of options and add ons like casters, pressure kits, and even external glycol chillers. So you can find out more about the new Brewbuilt X1 Conical Uni Tanks by going over to morebeer.com for detailed videos on the entire line of Brewbuilt Conicals. You can trust Brewbuilt with your next fermentation, and you can trust More Beer to find the right conical for you. Brewbuilt at morebeer.com. Welcome to the session. I'm your host, Justin Crossley, and with me still on our summer tour, the Justin and Beardy Show. Beardy's here. Hi, Justin. I'm still here. Yeah, and I'm sticking with our new name, the Justin and Beardy Show. We're changing the entire session, I think, to be called the Justin and Beard. Justin and the Beard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. it's a new name every show. It is, because I could never remember what I named it the last show. But I think it's Justin and the Beard. That sounds right. Was that the last yeah, one I did? Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. I think it'll make good t shirts. I can picture them. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, today, we're actually doing our first uh, live show of the tour. We're at Radiant Beer Company in Anaheim, California. Um, and I'm really happy to be here. Um, I, I've met uh, Jonas before. Jonas is with us. Uh, Jonas Namira is the co founder and president. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, I really appreciate it. And uh, Andrew Bell, who's the co-founder also and uh, director of brewing here. Yeah. Uh, first Thanks time for meeting coming down. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah, happy to be here. I- I've had your beer before. Um, and and then also, not only that, you came recommended to Beardy. I, I had Beardy sent me a mm-hmm. list of places that we might go on this tour, and, and you guys were on the list on top of that. So. Uh, Always nice to hear when we get recommended. Yeah. yeah. All the way up in Washington, people are talking about oh, you. Oh, nice. So, yeah. 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 That's where it was. Well, when you're the Great American Beer Festival Brewery of the Year, which I think you were in 21, is that right? Yep, our uh, first year. Your very first year as a brewery? Yep. Yes. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly felt that way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a nice surprise. That's uh, some my, overachieving. My text to Andrew was literally, what the F just happened. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, all right, well, let's just talk about that. For, let me do this really quick. Uh, thanks to our sponsor, More Beer, who brings you this show and every show. They're the sponsor of the session and the Justin and the Beard show. Wow, two, two yeah. sponsorships. Yeah, in one Are show. Are they billed for two? Because <laughs> no. they should be now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so thanks to More Beer and all of our sponsors, but to More Beer for, for keeping us uh, going all of these years. Um, yeah, did you, how did you, yeah, winning on your first year as a brewery is pretty much unheard of. It, it was, uh, yeah, it was a nice, nice little surprise. Um, both of us have been in the industry for a while, and I think I know I have several times. I think you have as well been up on stage to yeah. get yeah. a GABF medal. So I went in the competition. We had tasted our beers uh, right before leaving for it, and felt hopeful, you know, to get maybe a bronze or a silver or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then we got announced for gold, and go up on stage, and they start reading like a sponsor message, and they're sort of like pretending like they can't find like the list right. and then all of a sudden it flashes on the screen like brewery of the year and they like push me up on the stage it was uh amazing yeah it, i'm i'm glad i didn't like see that coming because i would have just been shaking like the entire <laughs> yeah, time yeah. it was it was pretty surreal but <laughs> to get that you have experience. to have won uh, multiple medals in, we, in we only we only got one gold uh for only. our for our category it was a bigger category um okay and i think we had another beer in metal round but that doesn't really yeah no it's just, really it's just based on metal count yeah so and, if it, and if it's a tie it's metal count and they associate it also with 
gold gets a certain amount of points, silver and bronze, and sure. then if there's a tie, which I believe there was, okay, uh, it, it goes by the size of the category that you got ah. gold in. Okay, but you had you, to get the points, you still have to get medals. So you got yeah. one yes. gold, but you got other medals that, that year. Yeah, no, we, no, we just got the one, just the one gold. Yeah. Oh, I see. But yeah. just so it was many, the most important so gold. Much. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. What it was, was the it? Was a little bit of luck. Uh, hazy pale. <laughs> and the, oh, okay. Got yeah, it. which I is is it the one I had today that you have on tap now? No, no, no we, we rotate through them. Got it. Uh, but, that's but, but, most, but most of them are the same ballpark. For our hazy pails, we usually we do like two thirds citro, one third other hop. Okay. Um, so the one you had on tap right now had a, an experimental hop in it. The one that won was uh, citro strata. Okay, got it. So that's a pretty good combo. Yeah, you're stacking the deck in your favor there. Yeah, and there, so there was a ton of entries in that category. There were. It's, yeah. It was it like the second largest or something. It I, was. It was in the top five. Yeah, because IPA of any both West Coast and Hazy, Hazy IPA are the top. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, American that's IPA true. and Hazy, and then I'm trying to remember what was that year. I don't recall. I mean, I, now I it's now actually the longer categories yeah, are Pils- some of the Pilsner's biggest like ones, one which is one. surprising and, but awesome to see. Yeah, yeah. and barrel aged out oddly yeah. too. Yeah. But, so we've been joking on this tour. We're we're starting to change the name of the whole tour to the Logger Tour. Also, <laughs> yeah, every brewery we've been to, we're finding more loggers than we've ever seen. And of course, brewers love loggers. So whenever we hang out with brewers, that's what we drink. But actually, finding three, four, five loggers on almost everybody's menu. And they're also fantastic. Yeah. Which, you know, I know there was a learning curve, but we made it. Yeah. (laughs) And now you can have that many options, and they're awesome. I would actually call it a learning mountain. Uh, (laughs) Because when I started this show in 05, it was really unique to find a good craft logger, to be honest. I think I've talked about this on the show before. So, I mean, every now and then you'd go to a brewery, a craft brewery, and you'd you drink mm-hmm. one and you'd go, oh my god, they I, they brewed a lager and they, they brewed it well, but it was it was pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, it's a harder style to brew, right? For sure. Um, I mean, I'm very happy that we keep a lot of lagers on. I don't know how many we have right at this moment, but last I time think I checked, it's it was five like right six, now, which yeah. tends to be yeah. yeah, yeah. It, usually it's like three or four. And we're um, packaging one tomorrow, so yeah. wow, yeah, five is a lot. Like even yeah. for nowadays, I'm happy to see it. There's no mm-hmm. complaining here. It's okay. what happens when we come to town. Yeah, they put an extra week. one on. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Even though I only gave everybody like one week notice that we're coming to town, they, all, they brewed lager for us. Yeah, you know, that's that that quick turn lager, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not so much. Let's <laughs> call it Brewing Network Lager. Mm-hmm. Brew it fast. Um, yeah. Well, let's talk about the lager that's in our glass while we're, while we're at it. What are we drinking right yeah, now? Yeah, it's a beer called Can Down by the River. It's a nice. American lager with. Uh, it's like twenty percent rice in it. Um, a little bit, a little bit more bitter and a little bit more hop than you would expect from like a standard macro domestic lager. But um, mm-hmm. trying to be you know crisp, clean, easy drinking. Uh, we've for the most part we well we uh, rotate our beers constantly, and for the most part they're one offs. But we brewed this, I believe, two other times before, if not three. This is at least the third. Yeah, maybe, maybe the fourth. Um, um, but a lot of our American lagers are very similar in this vein. Um, just light, crisp, yeah. you know, easy drinking. But a little bit hoppy, like you said. Yeah, a little bit hoppy. I, I feel like all of, our, all of our lagers verge a little bit hoppier than would be traditional. But uh, especially for American lager, I feel the issue for me with drinking a lot of the macro ones, which I, there's a ton of brewers out there who would be like, oh, yeah, my favorite beer is like, you know, PBR, MGD, PBR. MGD uh, sure. I, I genuinely d- do not like drinking those because if they get a little bit warm, they don't have enough bitterness and they just come across flabby to me. Yeah. Um, so I think the little bit of extra bitterness for sure helps in the drinkability. And then also, even if it's not like ice cold, and then also just having a little bit of hop aroma and flavor. What are the hops in this? This one, I believe, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure that this one is... Saws hmm. in okay. here. Um, it's either Saws or Saphir. The two American lagers that we do the most, one is Saws, one is Saphir. I think this one's Saws. Oh, okay. But it's still a continental yes. pop. Yeah. Okay. And nice. h- how is this filtered? You guys have a... Biofine. Just and Biofine? Bio you, ni- biofine in 29 degrees Fahrenheit for a couple uh, weeks. Oh, yeah, that'll do we, it. We get it really cold. Hmm. 
uh, our glycol system can handle that. So okay, we, yeah, we, we did inherit, inherit uh, a filter, but we've never used it. Yeah, and don't if anyone's looking for a DE filter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, a pretty a pretty big one if you're sub ten thousand barrels. Okay. Yeah. Um, you just don't find the need to do it, I guess. If you can chill your. No, nah, I mean it's so crystal clear. It, yeah, it's it's pretty bright. Super light SRM, I guess, like it's yep. supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, so the as far as the malt bill on this, uh, we do. We do two different Pilsner malts. Uh, part of it is a domestic uh, CMC pills. The other half is uh, Varmin Extra Pale Premium Pills. Okay. Um, we've tried it with just one or the other, and the blend actually comes together quite well. And then it's rice, which is yeah very little color. Um, um, what percent is rice? Just it's curious. around 20 all right. Okay. Yeah. Do you add rice holes to balance that, or is your system handled? Uh, it, handles, fine? it handles it just fine. Okay. Yeah, and there's some acid malt in here too, but okay. Yeah. It's like a can down by the river here. Is what <laughs> I think it's like, Beardy. So, yeah, they should call it that. Yeah, you just want to sit down by the river. That's a yeah. This is a really nice one, and I love that you just hopped it up just a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think you're right. They could just get so flabby. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of good American light lagers recently. Just like I'm saying, brewers have just gotten better at it, but. They still could be a little flabby. Yeah. We, the other fun thing about this is the can art and what we call it on the can, which is motivational lager. Mm. So can down by the river being the, re- mm-hmm. the SNL reference. Yeah. 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 I love so, it. What do you think the blending of uh, country malt and uh, Vireman does? Uh, the CMC and uh, oh, there go the lights. <laughs> Uh, is, is CMC not country malt? Uh, uh, no, no. It's Canadian okay. malt. Oh, Canadian malt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the... So the CMC pills is very, very neutral, um, but if you use it, when we did it just as, you know, all of the pills malt, it came across a little bit flabbier mm. um, than the Vireman Extra Pale, which is super, super lean. Sure. It's okay. a very, very lean malt. I, I, I don't do it in all of our, like, German Pilsners, but I do, like, incorporating it into German pills to even cut the regular mm. yeah. uh, German pills like intensity a little bit. All right, let's talk about how you guys got here. So if you won in 2021, you opened in 2020, or or you opened in 2021? We started selling beer in in 2021. Yeah, 2021, okay. Yeah, we sold the merchandise for the week of Christmas in 2020. Um, But yeah, basically we uh, found this space. I had previously been in a, a brewery and... Uh, basically, I, I live about a mile away, and so on my normal commute in, saw the release sign go up. I knew the brewery had, had gone out of business, and um, you know, months, almost a year later, then saw the release sign go up, and uh, started making inquiries and uh, figuring out, you know, what we could do. And what were you doing at that time? Uh, so I was working at Chapman Crafted Beer. Uh, oh yeah, as the oh. director of operations. It's a good brewery. Yeah, absolutely. I love those guys. Uh, still think they're making some awesome products. And yeah, um, but yeah. So then. Um, just started making some phone calls and figuring out what we could uh, get going. And and how'd you link up with Andrew? What were you doing? We we used to work together. Um, I came to start Radiant directly from the brewery, which I was there for just under ten years. Okay, uh, Jonas and I worked together at the brewery at for the brewery also. many years. Yeah, the the B R U E R Y brewery for yes. this. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Uh, although and my listeners should know by now because I do feel like something like half of the interviews I do have passed through the brewery <laughs> at some point in their mm-hmm. career. It's like a brewer factory over there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It t- it took a little break for a while um, after obviously Rare Barrel and Society. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess King Harbor was the only other one in between okay. that, that and us. Uh, well, there's one, Washington. there's one up in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. Um, so you guys worked together there, mm-hmm. got to know each other. Yeah. And then did you make the phone call like, hey, there's a building we, for lease or are you already planning this? I mean, we, we, we'd, we, had, we'd had conversations over the years a couple of times yeah. and just talking about, you know, what we, what you would do if we, we were, were able to start a brewery up. and um, But nothing really super serious. Um, I guess there'd been one other sort of call before that where there'd been an opportunity potentially um, but yeah, basically once this started coming in, into, you know, kind of, this is a reality that could happen, you know, reached out again and started talking and started planning out, uh, the brewery and, and, um, yeah, working with another, uh, uh, former coworker at the brewery to get things going with the marketing side of the business. And, okay. um, yeah, we basically, we took over this space in September of 2020 and we 
like I said, started selling some merchandise in December, and then we got our brewer's permit officially on New Year's Eve. And the brew house uh, so was, was here. It, it was turnkey? Uh, or? Not, I wouldn't say turnkey. Yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> a, a, a yeah. brew house here. Uh, there was a oh, brew house okay. here in some of the tanks, um, okay. but there was a lot of work that needed to be done to get everything <laughs> the first, the first and most important thing that we did before we brewed anything was get an RO system in. Oh, okay. Um, that's very important for this area. The water's um, no good here? Uh, like, our incoming TDS is like 500. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can probably brew decent stouts without RO here, but... I see. Mo- I, pretty much all, in this part of Anaheim, pretty much all the breweries that are making decent beer have yeah. RO systems. So I don't have to ask why the previous brewery went out of business then. If there, if there wasn't a... Um, <laughs> right. It certainly didn't help them. Spoiler yeah. alert. Yeah, that yeah. that yeah. might have been one of the reasons. Okay, yeah. So put in an RO system. So you had to drop, what, 40 grand right off the bat or something? A little bit less than <laughs> okay. that, but it was still a pretty big investment. We also yeah. had to have... Um, we also had to have a friend of ours who's a sanitary welder come out here and get into all the fermenters to polish out MIG welded in thermo wells. I see. Okay. There's oh, so they didn't have temperature control. Either. They, 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 they did. They did. They just, they didn't. Sp- yeah. They turned on the air conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they didn't spec the tanks properly or yeah. the tanks weren't designed properly, but mm. MIG welded in thermo wells aren't sanitary. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're just so, asking for bacteria to yeah, yeah. get they're, up in there. Sure. Yeah, we had to redo the CO2 system, a lot of the water post-RO. We had to redo the steam con- condensate return. Wow. It was a decent amount of stuff we had to... So wow. there was some homemade stuff in here, basically, that you had to go That's through. a good way of putting it. They, okay. they made some really good decisions, and they made some really bad decisions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we, but still we, cheaper we, we, than we, a new brew house, obviously. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Didn't, yeah, didn't have to do floor drains, electrical. Mm-hmm. There's more than enough electrical in the building. Yeah. Okay. The, that's, the, that's the trade-off you make when you purchase a brewery that's gone out of business, is that you... you Aren't nec- you didn't design it, so it's not necessarily the way you wanted it. But yeah, you can also open much much quicker. Like we took over keys in September and we started selling in January. Yeah, that's that's really fast. Yeah, mm-hmm. so. e- even with all the all fixing the and improvements and things. So when you got the lease, then did you both it, like immediately quit your your other jobs and start working on this full time? Uh, I gave the brewery a pretty long notice okay. um yeah. my job over there was innovation manager so i was doing all the r&d recipe development doing okay. raw material selection um so i helped whether they used them or not i helped write their pretty much all the recipe and blend plans for the whole next year before i left and did a lot of stuff for line plan for them they i mean they have most of what they were releasing at the time by SKUs at least was barrel age product um and they have a membership, so they need to know over right. a year in advance of what they're going to be releasing. So um, I didn't quit immediately, but put in a pretty long notice. And then my last day at the brewery was on a Friday, and Monday morning started here. Started here. Okay. Yeah. I made sure to set up Chapman with you know the, the right people and, and uh, give plenty of time. You know, Again, we, we, we took over the building in September, but it had been a eight month process before that. Sure. Everything. So. Well, I guess that's what I'm getting. It sounds like you still have to do a bunch of work here. Yeah. So, so fairly quickly you guys got in here and it was your full time gig yeah. before, mm-hmm. well before you were open. Even, yeah. yeah. Even though you opened quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and how big's your team now? Did you like, did you guys, did you have a large team right off the bat? What do you, what are we looking at right now? We're right around 18 employees. Okay. Uh, obviously about half that is tap room, um, mm-hmm. production side and to conduct a little bit about, yeah, it's a pretty small team. It's myself and, uh, my two main guys are Billy and Jake, uh, Billy being brewer, Jake does seller soon to be trained on brewing. Um, and then we have two awesome guys who kind of do a little bit of everything as well. Uh, Derek and Scott who do. Uh, do a lot of driving for us. They also help out on canning days. Uh, they help out with some general maintenance tasks. They wash kegs. They do a bunch of stuff for us. Okay. You guys self-distribute? Yes. We do. Uh, completely? Uh, yeah. We're in Southern California. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're, we're, I mean, we're in San Diego today. We do that about once a month or so. Um, and then we do Orange County, LA, uh, and then some of IE okay. yeah, pretty much every week. Got it. How much are you guys selling out of here versus... Uh, other accounts volume wise it's about uh 40 percent out of here and six percent out distro that's great yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's really good and i see you have cans like everybody gotta have cans of yep. course 16 yep. ounce cans try to have, keep the label art as interesting as possible do you have a canning line we do yeah you opened with that 
Uh, sort of. Uh, again, it, again, it was here. The previous times were running oh, Michelada boy. through it. Uh, <laughs> okay. So on purpose. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. If, you, if you would like a bucket of Michelada mix, we might still have some back there. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm it. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we had to wait for. Um, it's an ABE canning line, and we had to wait for uh, text to be able to come out, strip out all the soft parts. We added two fill heads as well, and a couple other upgrades. But okay, uh, so our first, first like six beers. I think it was a fir- maybe eight. I think it was the first eight or ten beers okay. were mobile cans were mobile um, through Boom Hut. Okay. Yep. Uh, hey, there's Andres. one. There's one, yeah. <laughs> Mo- mo- almost all, mo- mostly mo- through yeah, Boom Hut. That's a good point. Wasn't, yeah. but uh, yeah, shout out to Boom Hut. Really good mobile canner in uh, those sort of Southern California area. So, can I ask you, like, kind of the, the business side? You, you said the building was for lease, right? But all this stuff was in here too. Yep. Did you have to purchase the business and sign a lease? Like, how does it work? Did the brewery just leave all their stuff behind? No, okay, no, not okay. not at all. No. So uh, it was yeah, a purchase. It, it was it was dueling negotiations with different parties, and so yeah, yeah it was like renegotiating a lease with the landlord, and then. Um, we did, so to be very clear, we did not purchase the business. We purchased some assets from the business. Yep, understood. Yeah. Yeah. I'm and, saying and, that specifically because that's come up them. recently. <laughs> I see. <laughs> some, some state agencies getting confused with that. That's um, so weird. <laughs> All right, got it. Purchased yeah. assets from right. the business. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so we, we yeah, yeah that, that, that's what I'm saying. I like sort of like, you know, eight months to a year of different things happening to make that all happen. Sure. Um, okay. I mean, besides just actually getting the business set, getting all, you know, branding and, you know, name set up and, and everything like that. Um, yeah. uh, also just all those negotiations. Sure. Mm-hmm. I, and I will say we took over the keys to the space without having an actual name for the brewery. Oh, really? Yeah. Were there names floating around? Even? There, there, there we had several mon- months worth of yeah, going back there, and forth. With and, all the breweries there are these days, it's really hard to find a name that yeah. has not been taken and that is, that you can get a trademark on and that you want and that you want. <laughs> so this is um, the stuff yeah. I'm fascinated with, like the marketing side and how you choose a good name. Is there like a is there a boneyard of, of names that oh, didn't yeah. make it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. Massive, we, we have there's, there's a whole history. <laughs> All right, then let me do this. Let's take a quick break so we can get another beer in our glass because I want to talk more about beer. Mm-hmm. And when we come back, I want to hear some of the names that Radiant did Ooh, not boy. become. <laughs> like I want the okay, worst ones, route. the ones that you're embarrassed about. Like I can't oh, even believe boy. I thought of this name. That's what I want to hear. <laughs> you're listening to the session. We're live from Radiant Beer Co. in uh, Anaheim, California. Hang in there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the session. Thank you for hanging out with us. We are still at Radiant Beer Company in Anaheim, California, doing our first live show of the Justin and the Beard tour. And uh, it did just come up at the break, so I have to talk shit just for a second. Oh, just a second. Just a second, like five minutes. Oh, okay. Um, The Giants are in town this weekend playing the Dodgers, (laughs) Mm. and uh, I brought my Giants gear, mostly because I brought my whole house. Um, sure. That's because I live in what we're driving. Um, I actually have a van down by the river. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. Andrew, yeah. So. so you have a jersey for me also then? <laughs> I've got jerseys for everybody. Oh, okay. And uh, my, some of my, my high school friends are actually in, uh, in, in the audience tonight. And I was, I was kind of hoping. And they're still Dodgers fans. I, I was going to ask. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you abandoned them I defected. at some point. The, what happened was, see, what happened was, I was never really a sports fan as a kid, as my friends can attest. I was more of a... Um, how do you say a nerd? A nerd. <laughs> <laughs> right. Into radio wait, 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 podcasting? <laughs> really? Yeah, I was like, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm definitely old, so there was no podcasting. But yeah. in my brain, there was. Mm. And so I wasn't really a sports fan. So when I moved to the Bay Area, though, I became a sports fan. And then I became a Giants fan. So now I do have this rivalry with my friends. And I'm hoping that at least one of them is going to go to the game with me this weekend. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to take the train back up and see the Giants play the Dodgers probably Saturday. But I don't want to get my ass kicked. <laughs> by your friends? <laughs> no. Or by someone else? By someone else. Oh, so okay. So we have one friend who's probably the biggest Dodger fan of the group anyway, and he's quite large and intimidating mm-hmm. looking. Mm-hmm. So I'm hoping he's going to go, and then I can go to the Giants game. Um, <laughs> I, now, I wanted to go to an Angels game because I, I also 
on my list of things to do before I die in my early 60s. I want to um, hit every, every uh, baseball park in the country. It's, and it's believe it or not, even though I'm from Southern California, I've never been to the Angels Stadium. Yeah, it's 10 minutes that way. Yeah, but they're, yeah. But you're out of town. Oh, they're out there away. The yeah, yeah, I was checking it out. Maybe on the way back, though. Oh, well, it's going to be the freeway series next the, week. Mm. Oh, that's right. The Dodgers are coming here. Yeah, yeah. And we're, oh. doing, we're actually doing a dual can release uh, next Tuesday. Really? Uh, like one for each team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're doing uh, Halos in the outfield and huh. Azul in the infield. Really? Are We're going to be a family again, that? Justin. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to pick a side around here? I mean, I was born and raised in L.A. County. Okay. I still live in L.A. County. So you picked a side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. Baseball is not really my sport. I'm okay, that's a football, fair. basketball person. So. I think okay. we have more staff here that are Dodgers fans than Angels fans, to be totally honest. Yeah. Um, but well, let's be honest, just since we're on the topic. I mean, once Otani leaves, nobody's an Angels fan anymore anyway, are they? <laughs> Well, you do have one other You got guy. Trout. You'd have on, Trout. Come That's on. right. Okay. Yeah. And he's not leaving next year, too? Yeah. I heard something on the radio this Dustin, morning. is Trout leaving next I, year? I don't follow enough. He's still... Okay, so you'll have, enough, you'll have like five fans left <laughs> after, after the Giants sign Otani Just the Trout year. Farm. <laughs> Just the Trout Farm. <laughs> all right, what beer is in our glass before I really annoy all of our listeners? Uh, brighter than Sunshine. Okay, and it's what is a this? German Pills. Got it. All right, mm. tell or me about the Or at least our take on a German Pills, which is probably... Too hoppy if you ask German, but I don't know Germans nowadays. They like their hops too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a little Czech pillsy on the hop side, right? Isn't it the Czech pills? It's supposed to be hoppier than the German. Do I have that backwards? Uh, theoretically, yeah, more hop it's, flavor. Okay, and then I think it's great. More bitterness. I this is sort of how I like to drink these sort of lagers, uh, yeah. just with a decent amount of bitterness, and then. This has a huge Whirlpool hop edition, um, like bigger than any of our IPAs. Really? Yeah, but the, it isn't dry hopped or anything like that. But it's. Um, Does it's that weird. mean that you also do mm-hmm. less? At, like you don't do a, you do less at the sixty minute because you do more. At yeah, the so we, we do like a kettle full for bittering, and then there's a ten in here, mm-hmm. and then I mean this beer has for a thirty barrel turn has forty four pounds of hops in it almost all of that in the whirlpool okay wow. uh, that's sorry 44 pounds of aroma hops there's that doesn't include the bittering edition which is probably an extra five or six pounds okay are you doing a, a full temperature whirlpool edition or are you doing a partial uh, we, we, do, we do a so just the way we're brewing um for german pills we do have a little bit of a water back in the whirlpool um but we're we use hot liquor for that so it's probably like 190 Eight or something like that, two hundred degrees. So oh, okay, it's not. Yeah, for some want to talk about our uh, brew house tank size and the geometry that it takes to, oh, to yeah. get, to get it's, full. It, it, it's an interesting. Uh, so we have a thirty barrel brew house, three vessel uh, combo mash lauder, which is great. It can actually fit more malt and water more malt than uh, my previous employer, the breweries, hmm. uh, forty hectoliter German brew house. Wow. Um, the kettle is a little small. Uh, for something that's advertised as 30, like the max we can boil and it's almost up to the door is like 32 barrels. I see. Hmm. Which makes it really hard to knock out 30 barrels. And the Whirlpool is <laughs> the same size, so mm-hmm. transfer over. And for a lot of our beers, we uh, water back like a barrel or two. Um, okay. Hot liquor mm-hmm. for beers where we care about having a very precise bitterness level. And then cold liquor for beers where we want more aroma of flavor out of the hops and don't really care as much about the bitterness contribution for them. So like hazy IPA or something like that, we would use. Let me wrap my head around this. Does that mean you're basically brewing more of a concentrate and adding water? We, 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 so yeah, we'll brew like say a degree Play-Doh higher than target starting gravity. And then once we're in the whirlpool, we'll, Add back, you know, a barrel or two of water, whatever. We okay, need yeah, to. not not true, like high gravity. Yeah, brewing. no, it's sure, but, sure. It, it, but just enough so that you can actually do a whirlpool because of the tank well, size. Basically, thing. yeah, the idea is to try and max out the whirlpool volume to try and get over thirty barrels in the fermenter. Got it. Um, which most thirty barrel brew houses, you'd have like a forty barrel, at least forty barrel kettle. Okay. So it's Got more, it. it's kind of like a 27 barrel brew house, but it's marketed as a 30. <laughs> That's yeah. so funny. We just make it 27. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to be annoying. I, but, I mean, conservatively you could call it a 25, but <laughs> wow. It, it's all relative to the, the gravity and the hops yeah. that you're, that you're yeah. brewing on the recipe. Like at a heretic, we would often knock out 33, 34 sometimes. Yeah. 
even on the IPA and the hoppier beers, just even though it's a 30 barrel brew house yeah. nominally. Oh, yeah. uh, getting back to some oddities for our system and tank farm. Um, so uh, we inherited, we kept eight tanks, eight fermenters from the previous brewery. Again, 30 barrel brew house. Four of the tanks we inherited were 30 barrels, and four of them were 15 barrel fermenters. Interesting. So, really, really a hodgepodge they left you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we've since added three 30 barrel fermenters and swapped around bright tanks and stuff like that. But so, they probably were just acquiring what they were finding around or on they, discount. I no, mean, they couldn't they, have they, been they, a plan. They, they, these were custom they, ordered. They, these were custom ordered and spec'd You're out. Kidding. And the, oh. then the previous owner of this facility went to. Um, went to Hong Kong to actually oh. look at the tanks, but the problem was he wasn't, he had no brewing background. He just wanted to go to Hong Kong. I mean, yeah. who doesn't? Yeah. yeah. He just make yeah. a business trip. Just business right off. <laughs> I'll take one of those <laughs> yep. and those one of those, like... and then I'll be over at the bar. Yeah, they, they had 15 30s and 60s. Okay. But okay. honestly, the, the 15s we didn't, we didn't want the are, are great. Like, yeah, really, 15 is a great batch size to sell. Like, we, we actually tend to, to like have those be harder to make decisions of what we're going to brew into than the 30s. Yeah. The 30s okay. is like sort of just we, IPA, lager, like just keep it going. Yeah. The 15s can be things that are more challenging to sell, but I it's see. really fun to make. Sure. Or just more expensive. Or, or just more expensive, yeah. Okay. Does yeah. your How does your brew house handle doing half a batch? It's it's pretty fine. Like if it's oh, okay. a very, very low gravity beer, it's a little bit of a challenge. But um, actually what I really love doing in them, and we'll get to this with the last beer, um, is brewing big stouts or barrels just max out the mash mm-hmm. a thirty barrel mash ton and knock out fifteen barrel well sixteen barrels into a fifteen barrel fermenter sure wow. and not having to do double mashes or anything weird like that is it just break the rakes usually, usually oh yeah, yeah we break the rakes almost every time we do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, yeah, yeah just because it's so much volume in there uh, um, yeah it the rakes are a little bit on the <laughs> Not the best of it's usually the opposite, right? That you that the kettle would be lo- so much larger than the mash tun. Like I've heard of people there, doing yeah. two mashes yeah. to do boil, the type yeah. of boil you're mm-hmm. talking yeah. about. Yeah, that's what we had to do at the brewery for. Okay, yeah, it was a German brew house meant for you know twelve degree plate of lagers. Yeah, yeah, trying to brew, brew Black Tuesday on it. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Would you, if you were specking out everything, would you also have gotten fifteen barrel? Fermenters with a 30 bell brew house? Probably would have gone a smaller brew house, but if we were specking everything out, we would have probably gone a 15 or a 20. Yeah, but if, if I'm going to be honest, like for the style of brewery that we want to be with doing, you know, as much direct to consumer sales as we can, mm-hmm. 15, 20, especially opening up during COVID, yeah, would have been really a better decision, but this facility was available, everything worked out sure. with the costs and everything, so it, it, it made sense, and, and we've been able to make it work really well you just deal to with our it. advantage. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it works. It's the same amount of effort to do a 15 as a 30, but... Sure. Yeah, you get to do some more esoteric things in them, or... Well, tell me more uh, about the beer, about the pills. Yeah, uh, so German pills uh, split malt on this one with uh, regular Vireman pills and then Vireman Extra Pale Premium pills to you know, cut it, make it a little bit leaner. Um, it has a three, well, it's Magnum for bittering. And then um, it's uh, middle through Tet and Saphir. Oh, nice. Um, and like I said, it's a massive whirlpool. So we're for generally our German pills, we're doing, you know, whatever we need to get to round. I think this beer is like target 35 IBU. Hmm. Um, but there's for a 30 barrel batch, there's an 11 pound, addition at 10 minute and then 33 pounds in the whirlpool okay so over a pound per barrel tastes like it yeah i love it 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 works it also finish it does and it but it also has the malt sweetness that it should have too Mm -hmm. yeah and water wise i I mean i'll give away whatever you guys want it's a w3470 beer uh 65 ppm sulfate 35 ppm chloride okay target okay yeah what's the uh mash schedule uh, it's single infusion. We can we do have steam on our mash tun, but we don't usually use it unless we're correcting things, um, like if we miss temperature. But uh, it's a pretty lean mash uh, temp. I think it's like 147 for this beer. It's 147 okay. or 148 Fahrenheit. Are you doing any pH adjustments? Yeah. Anywhere yeah. Yep. What, what are you doing for that? 
Uh, we do phosphoric acid for all of ours, um, okay. and the target for knockout for this is 5.05 to 5.15. Okay. And you just do all the correction post-boil or in the world? No, no, we do, we do it in the mash tun. I, I personally like to aim a little bit lower than what people say you should in the books. Uh, our target mash at, like, mash rest is 5.00 to 5.2. Okay. Um, that's what we were doing at the brewery for our for our blonder beers since I started there. It was like the Tyler King thing, um, mm. and I thought it works really well for Christmas. So we we have a little bit lower mash pH than a lot of people look and, for. And if it's five even at, at the beginning of mash, mm. you're still at around five at knockout. Also, uh, so it'll go up with sparging and such like that and mm-hmm. then during the boil it lowers right but you end up at basically yeah. the same yeah. okay it's a great beer yeah oh, thank you appreciate it yeah it's one of my favorite i've had today so far yeah it's really nice mm-hmm. all right i promised and teased before the break that we might uh dive into the boneyard of broken names <laughs> that, uh, that 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 radiant did not become those beer names or you no? This is the brewery name uh, <laughs> really? ideation document. Man, there's some, <laughs> yeah. there's some really one. terrible ones. I forgot. Uh, here we yes. go. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, Credo, Zulu, Craftwell. Wait, is this all? Oh, oh this is not one. These are, these are all different. Oh, these, these, are, these are all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, because no. Credo, Zulu, <laughs> Craftwell is not that bad. Yeah, it has <laughs> a ring. <laughs> What's the one up there? Blind, blind juggler. juggler. Blind juggler. <laughs> what name was that? Uh, I'm not going to look at those. Uh, <laughs> Mudita. Um, lyric was one that we looked. Oh, at. I like lyric. We, yeah, yeah there, 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 like so this is like the everything. No, yeah. I mean, that's right. what I wanted. Many this is the brainstorm. Yeah. Future, future state. Future state was one that we talked about a lot. We the, made a beer name. I, I like out of that, that one. Uh, mm-hmm. Inherent good also is another one that we then made a beer. That's uh, really good. Out of that. Mm-hmm. Um, Chromatic was chromatic. Right. We talked about a lot that had okay. some uh, issues. trademark issues. Oh, uh, uh, I can see how you sort of drifted from chromatic to, to radiant. radiant. They, yeah, they're, they're yeah. attached. That yeah. was on the theme. that basically became the theme. You know, so obviously we're talking about this all during COVID, and even before that, like I just loved the idea of creating a brand that exuded positivity and you know good things. People want to associate with brands that make them feel good. Yeah. And you want to give them something that makes them feel good beyond the product itself. Obviously we want to give them the best product we can, but we want them to also feel like we're creating a community. We want them to make them feel like the, the brand itself is something that they can relate to. Sure. And positivity and lights and all that and color. And yeah, like that, that all goes into most of the names that really made it to, to the, the, second. the second round, second, third, fourth, fifth sure. rounds. Cool. Um, and yeah, radiant just worked out. The best. Uh, Who came up with Radiant? Who gets to pat themselves on the back for that? Jonas? Oh, good, it's in the spreadsheet. Good question. I hope it's like your third cousin or something. <laughs> you know? Uh, that's so, going to take a minute. I might have to look at that. Or your uh, best customer. Oh, it's <laughs> somewhere up there, Some guy at 7 <laughs> Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, man, get the Radiant out of here. Right. <laughs> I, I it's I not positive say... at all. <laughs> <laughs> radiant to you too, pal. Yeah. <laughs> do you, do you want to? Go into the whole. Yeah, yeah, we can definitely go into it about radiant. Yeah, so it, yeah. so again, like with, with all these things, it's like you know, there's a, do we all like it, and then b, there's, is it protectable, and is it not already taken? Obviously, sure. um, and for radiant, is it protectable? Was kind of a question mark, honestly, okay. because there's mm. some other places that have tried uh, doing it, and we ended up actually buying a trademark that was existing in the beer space in oh. order to fully protect uh, no the brand. From, from a, mm. from a from friend a, of ours. Yeah, good, yeah. Good. Was it the brewery name or a beer name? Or It was a beer, it was name. A beer name, okay. name for a beer that hadn't been brewed in about six years. Okay, but it was trademarked. That it was trademarked, was trademarked and yeah. the way that... Uh, so it was Radiant Summer Ale was the, the trademark. The way that trademarks work is you can't protect any part of the name that is like common or, or just generic. Sure. And so Summer Ale is generic, so that's not protected. Mm-hmm. So that this became Radiant. That was the only part that was protected. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so we... Radiant. we Purchased that from uh, a friend at head on the brewery, and then uh, changed it, and now we have that protection. Got so, it. Awesome. Yeah, and they hadn't brewed the beer in six years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they they do have the ability so, to continue to make that as a pilot batch because it does still have some special uh, meaning. It was, for, meaning it was, to it was their first beer that won a GABF medal too. Are we allowed? Mm-hmm. We're not allowed to say who we bought it from. 
Or are we? I think they'd be okay with it. Yeah, yeah. Nobody it, even listens uh, to the show. Uh, guys. <laughs> 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 one, two, All right. three, four. Oh, so five. Jamie lets you buy it. Yep. Yes. Yep. Jamie's a good dude. Jamie's a great guy. Jamie, Jamie's not going to sue you. Call. No. He might yeah. yell at you, but he's not going to sue <laughs> you. No, no, no. He hasn't yelled at me before. Yeah. Uh, well, well, that's great that you guys were able to work that out. Yeah. It's also great that you did that amount of due diligence. As you know, not everybody does. Mm-hmm. No. Um, and then not only do you get yourselves in trouble, but it's a pain in the ass for the other people, too, mm-hmm. to have to protect something like that. And um, we, we know about that, too. It's happened quite a bit. <laughs> it's happened quite a bit with the hop grenade, with, mm-hmm. with my logo yeah. itself. And, then, oh, I and then I got partially sued. Uh, it didn't. That was a four year battle oh wow Ouch. That, that just got resolved um yeah this and well i'm glad it got resolved it's uh <laughs> yeah it got resolved enough we talk about that off air but um it's uh i'm just glad that you guys did the due diligence and because as you know yeah now, and now you certainly know yeah it gets tricky fast yeah, and what well. you're allowed to protect is tricky it's a whole you know you really got to lawyer up and i'm not a a fan of that uh you know of litigation but there is, uh, I, I do think that trademark law is, is something that's super important yeah, and, and needed. It is. Um, by the way, go to thebeerlawcenter.com. Our mm. friend John Absolutely. helps me out with mine and can help you out with yours. Um, he doesn't do specifically trademark law, but he does beer law stuff. Um, but trademark law is tricky. And I, know, I now know more about it than I ever thought I would. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, uh, it's not a bad thing, I suppose. Yeah. And we also yeah. have a funny story about that trademark with another brewery and then not, not going into litigation, but working through to create a, a, a fun collaboration out of it instead. So, so when it works out like that, it's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> I, had a, I had a German beer company that started using my logo. Um, and I can't really protect it overseas. Yes. Uh, when I <laughs> we trademarked, know, we know about that as well. Mm-hmm. Right? Like yeah. when I trademarked the hop grenade, I was asked, do you want it to, what countries do you want it in? And the problem is not the expense of trademarking it everywhere. It's the expense of defending it, right? So I said, well, mm-hmm. fuck it. I'll just do it in the U.S., you know. Yeah. Although so it's not cheap the, to trademark it everywhere. It's not, but it's, it's way worse to protect it. Sure. So this company started using it um, on their – and it wasn't even their primary logo. It was just a little, little hop grenade that they started putting on the neck of their bottles, and they put on some of their merch and stuff. And uh, I let it go. My listeners who travel would send it to me all the time. Well – Fast forward a couple of years, they contacted me and asked, like, hey, um, we're, we're going to start distributing to the United States. Hmm. And we noticed that we have the same logo. Um, and, I, and, I, and I quote, they were like, so in the spirit of craft beer, how about you just let us do that? <laughs> and I was like, in the spirit of craft beer, how about you get your own fucking logo? <laughs> um, and I didn't say it quite like that, but I did say, I did sort of. You throw fucking it. fuck. I did <laughs> sort <laughs> yeah, 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 you not. No. Uh, oh, oh, I think it's hers. <laughs> Straight for the jugular. <laughs> no, no, I just was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's not really going to work. Um, and in fact, now that we're talking, I think that since I've owned my trademark for 10 years before yours, that in the spirit of craft beer, you should stop using yours in Germany too. And it went back and forth and they ended up just, they stopped talking to me and never sent their beer to the United States. At least not with my, at least not with my logo on it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it can get tricky and especially when it becomes international. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They said, hey, how about we let you like broadcast in Germany if you let us sell beer here? <laughs> Like, and I was uh, like, well, I've been broadcasting in right. Germany since. <laughs> yeah. Do you know how podcasting works? It's like a brewery protects the airwaves in Germany. That's, yeah, uh, that's unique. Uh, it, was very, it was a really strange interaction. But anyhow, uh, like I said, I, I have learned a lot. So uh, I'm thankful for that. But it gets, it gets tricky. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad you guys did your, your due diligence. Um, and then what about the image did you, th- that you didn't have any trouble with? Because there's, there's logos and there's words that have to be trademarked as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we actually just, right now we only actually have the, uh, the, the word mark. We haven't done the, the whole like image uh, mark and everything. But yeah, we, we worked with a uh, designer that we had uh, worked with previously at the brewery actually to do the logo design with the little sunburst and the uh, you know, stylized text. And uh, yeah, went through a couple of different iterations and just yeah, loved what he came up with. And um, yeah, I'm very happy with it. It's great branding. I think you, you guys did a good job. And you keep the theme going throughout the brewery. You can see it from the outside. It carries on inside. So it's, you, you can tell that you really thought it out. Thank you. Um, we tried. Yeah, yeah. Well, you did it. Um, 
and I'm, I assume your, your customers have now sort of bought into the vibe that you're, that you're putting out there too, this positivity and the light and I sure hope so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's definitely what we're trying to sell to people. And I, yeah, I agree with you. Like the community that we've built is definitely, um, yeah, they, they, they want to be part of that. They want to be here. Um, and and yeah. we want them to be here. So excellent. All right, let's do this. Let's take another quick break so we can try some more beer when we come back. You're listening to the session live from Radiant Beer Co. in Anaheim, California, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the session. Thank you so much for hanging out with us still. We are at Radiant Beer Company in Anaheim. Uh, we're talking baseball at the break more, of course. Oh, we were? Yeah, we, as, oh. in, as in me and, and the cool people in the room, Beardy. <laughs> oh. Um, and I learned some sad news um, that I wonder if my friends know. Baseball sucks. <laughs> How, dare Don't you. Tell my How dare you? <laughs> it's sad for some people. I learned that the, the baseball team from the town where I grew up is no more. The High Desert Mavericks. The Mavericks, where I spent, you know, small chunks of my childhood. Uh, <laughs> <smoking> <laughs> <meat>. <laughs> uh, have since gone belly up. And uh, it's, it's making me feel my age because I was told even that like the stadium was in disarray when it went under. And I was like, it was brand new when we used to go. And so where, where was the uh, High Desert Maverick Stadium? So I, I grew up in Hesperia, oh, California, uh-huh. and the stadium was in Atalanto. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, Atalanto. Uh, which was, I guess, a good 45-minute drive, so you got good and high on your way there. <laughs> is that, is that <laughs> desert speak for Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, when you're high enough. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I didn't know they were gone. So I had uh, a similar experience recently, actually, of uh, traveling through my childhood home and the, the mall that was, like, the mall that, that you know, came... It was built brand new when I was in sixth grade or whatever, is now totally vacant, decrepit, right. grass growing through. It looks apparently, like a zombie. Apparently they shot a really cool car video, like literally like leaping off the second story on <laughs> the first yes. story in the mall. <laughs> uh, but yeah, kind of crazy. And it feels weird, right? Because I remember that stadium as if it's brand new. Like if I drove yeah. up to it right now, I would expect it to be shiny and new. Yeah. And instead it's dark and falling down. <laughs> yeah. like you can get out in the field. <laughs> yeah. All right. What beer is in our glass now, Andrew? Actually, I don't even remember. So Wonder, in the world. Wonder in the World. Oh, there, there we go. go. Yeah. Wonder in the World. It's the West Coast IPA? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sort of our take, at least, on West Just Coast. We, also, we kind of, we've gotten away from it a little bit, but at least using it in marketing. What do you mean? Uh, we, we kind of do two different types of clear IPA. One ah. that's like... We used to market more as West Coast and one that we marketed just as just as IPA, IPA, but modern in our... Internally, we'd say modern IPA. Yeah. I've learned okay. from a previous uh, job that if you say modern IPA, people get just really confused. Yeah, yeah. what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Not they, for a friend. I'm asking yeah. for a friend. So for, of course. for our West Coast, we go for like a little bit more bitter. Um, and then for our modern IPAs, we... Modern, in air quotes. Uh we do a lot less bitterness and then focus more on like tropical fruit flavors. Both are really highly attenuated. But. So let's just call it what it is. You're looking for the flavors of a hazy, but a clear, but I mean, a clear beer. To be to be honest, in like IPA, I like. I wouldn't say it's the flavor of a hazy. It might okay. be the hop aroma and flavor of a hazy. Yeah, yeah. And bitterness level, but still really dry and attenuated. Okay. Um, yeah. I think it's more I, I mean, just generally where you've seen a lot of the West Coast in particular, but a lot of the you know the newer breweries are, you know, crystal malt doesn't exist in IPA anymore. Let's just be honest not, with yeah, that. Yeah. Like, and, 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 and it hasn't for a long time. It hasn't for, for, it hasn't for, for a very long time. <laughs> and you're trying to get, yeah, a very dry, attenuated beer that ultimately is just a platform for hop yeah. aroma and flavor. Sure. And, yeah. and to be honest, like, me personally in drinking IPA, I love to have like intense saturated aroma flavor, but I don't necessarily need intense bitterness. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just enough to balance and you don't need that much to balance when it's a super attenuated beer. Yeah. So for right. like more West coast ones, it, we would aim for recipe calculated. It's like 
60 IBU or something like that. And okay. It's probably higher, but, um, but by hops, by pounds per barrel, it's way above that. It's just, you're oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's just, yeah. For one, we target, you know, for the West coast style, we target a little bit more bitter and then usually a little bit more like citrusy hop character. And then for our more modern ones, at least for a while we were targeting low bitterness, still highly attenuated, like a lot of stone fruit, tropical fruit mm-hmm. character. So I love this the is, term is, modern IPA. Yeah. Actually, I, I think it encompasses exactly what you're talking about. I think a lot of times it's easy for brewers to come up with these terms that make sense to us yeah, yeah. because we're mm-hmm. so hyper involved in the industry and seeing all these little tweaks and iterations that are happening. Right. Mm-hmm. But then the consumer at broad, like, yeah, has, has no idea what you're we, talking we, about. We, we, did, we did have one funny one where we actually put modern IPA on the can. Um, <laughs> We, they thought it was a modern times collab. Well, no, no, <laughs> not, not quite. We, we, did, okay. one we, did, we did one of those. Okay. Um, <laughs> but no, we were internally, we had been calling them modern IPAs and we had been, we were at a festival and, uh, one of our, our sales guy at the time was like describing the, the beer as modern IPA and people were like, what is that? And then he had to like explain what that was. And at the end of it, he's like, if one more person fucking asks me what a modern idea <laughs> is, I'm going to tell them, right. tell them that it has Bluetooth. <laughs> That's hmm. perfect. And so and we yeah, so beer. We named a beer. Bluetooth. It has Bluetooth. Bluetooth modern IPA. <laughs> I love it. Just for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he came up with a couple. He had good names. Yeah, several yeah. good names. Yeah. With, with, with uh, ABV creep and everything, I mean, it's basically a pale ale. Modern IPA. Is it is <laughs> a pale ale? Yeah, I mean, strong pale. Yeah. you know, a GBF is basically a modern IPA, low yeah. IBU IPAs and high IBU pale yeah. ales. Yeah. So we we do uh, regularly brew a uh, competition strong pale ale, and and it is actually different from yeah. this, though I will say. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. what hops are in this? Uh, so this is Simcoe forward, and then it's ac- accentuated a little bit by or accent I don't know either one mm. that you want to use uh, with a little bit of Citra and a little bit of Nelson I love that Nelson. and that's um, for us you know for a lot of brewers um, sourcing hops and selecting them is pretty important yep so you go to selection we, we go to selection uh, this from 22 crop year the only hops that we're not selecting a lot for are our Euro hops okay so mm-hmm. all of our all of our New Zealand hops and all of our domestic hops are selected. Nice. I think um, I'm going to start to be able to tell which breweries get to select their own hops when I drink their hoppy beer. Oh. Uh, I'm serious. And I'm doing that. And it's coming from the show. I'm being educated on the show. And it's that my favorite hoppy beer brewers, the ones that I really rave about, like I would rave about this beer. Um, and Appreciate when I it. when I can pick out the hops I like, yeah. like I, I'm just a big Nelson fan, like most hop nerds right now, mm-hmm. um, I can pick it out of there. They almost always tell me, "Oh yeah, I selected." You know, I do I do mm-hmm. hop selection. So I used to not like Nelson hops. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> same. I was in the same boat <laughs> yeah. Yeah. until I started liking diesel and dank. Well, mm. so but I don't like diesel and dank, and that's for me. Like that's you, you, you can have good you. diesel yeah. and dank. Nelson hops, yeah. or you can have the Nelson Not. hops that are this beautiful white gooseberry. wine, gooseberry, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. passion fruit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yours are pretty gooseberry. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's like so. Ghost Town Brewing, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, like the winningest brewery on earth in the current time. Yeah, um, we were we were waiting in line behind them last year to to get your awards. A, yeah. To go get yeah. a medal at JBF, <laughs> nice. um, and I was chatting with them like. Wait, this is like your whatever third, fourth one. I'm like, what was your production size this year? He's like, oh, yeah. just under ten. I'm like, you guys are about to get buried here. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, right. That's fine. They yeah. okay. Yeah. Two, two and a half minutes later, buried of the year. Of the year Same yeah. thing. Well, and I asked him. I said, what do you think the difference is? Because they've been doing this for a while. And um, Justin, the brewer, said um, one of the main differences he thinks was when they started selecting their own hops. Yeah. And then there's been a couple of other brewers who have said the same thing to me. And I really think, uh, you know, you can. There, there just is a difference. And you, know, you can make great beer without selecting your own hops, obviously. Yeah. So brewers out there or young brewers and new brewers that you're not at that volume, fear not. Don't worry. Uh, you're going to make great beer. You can still purchase great hops. But when you know exactly what you want and you're able to go find it, yep. it, it just seems to make all the I mean, difference. Beer, beer is an agricultural product. Yeah. And this beer is water, hops, malt, yeah. yeast. 
and and consistency is something you can get when you pick your own right. lots that, and everything. That, that's, the that's spot a, market that's is a big, box to box. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, a big yeah. part of why we why we started when we started out brewing. You know, constantly rotating beers uh, was because we didn't have hop contracts because we took over the space in September. Sure, um, <laughs> four months wasn't enough yeah. for yeah. you to get those. Yeah, yeah. so we, we ended up. Uh, so we, we, we were very for, fortunate, though. Yeah, we were very fortunate. I have some really good friends in the industry who make some really good hoppy beers. Um, that, that was the, the, the one benefit of opening during COVID is yeah, that people uh, some people were a bit yeah. long on hops. Got it. That makes or, sense. Or at least were very generous to us. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah, we got some pretty awesome lots of hops from a couple different friends. This okay. is a great beer. How many pounds per barrel of hops would you say this beer is? This beer is right around three. Okay. On dry hop. Yeah. Okay. And, and it just as crystal clear, by the way, as all of oh, your yeah. other beers. Again, uh, with a 29-degree lager on this uh, one? No, for ales, we do 32. But Oh, 32. Yeah. <laughs> so we got three degrees higher. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because <Why>? ale. Yeah. <laughs> it's obvious. Yeah, no. it's, it's a warmer ferment, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It needs to be a little slightly just warmer slightly. Yeah. lager. But so yeah. finings and, and a cold... Yep. Yeah, a cold A little crash. bit of time. I mean, we're not... It's beautiful. We're not completely turning and burning on any of our tanks we're not we, we could have tighter turns if we needed to but i mean we schedule out usually like 25 to 28 days for ipa total okay. tank residency so okay. that's on the longer side these it, days it, it is, it it, is. It is. We, we, we could cut it down we, we probably need to start cutting it down a little bit here in the but, in near future but but that, at the end of the day that, that like we're me. in a we're in a meeting right now beardy <laughs> so, uh, andrew we are talking about cutting that down right, right. yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, we just also added a new 30, so we'll be okay. Nice. Um, but no, for us, though, that said, uh, our biofining process, we crash, we hard crash to 32, and then the next day we biofine, and usually the next day or the day after, it's pretty, it's pretty clear. Okay. Mm-hmm. And what about this incredibly long-lasting foam head on the top of this beer? That is, I know that that sounds silly to ask about, but it's kind of uncommon. I'm halfway through my glass for you folks at home, and I still have like a great white head on this IPA. So I appreciate secrets to that. I appreciate you you mentioning that. Um, I I I I wish that I was actually even more proud of this beer. It has extremely nice lacing, but we would ha- I would like to have a little bit more head on it. Mine's and pretty I, lacing. And, and I say oh, that... Oh, wow. It's, it's, heavy, it's heavy lacing. Awesome. Oh. But I say that only because we have a long draw system here, mm. which is not my favorite thing in the world. And so, um, you mean when it pours, instead of a short draw, exactly. draft system? When, yeah. when, we, when we opened up... Uh, because we, Again, we, we opened yeah. up during the second lockdown, um, so we were just signed cans at the door. Yeah. When we were allowed to start opening up to any kind of on-premise sales, outdoor food required, yada, yada. Uh, we were replacing the long draw lines, and so we were pouring off of the system right behind us here, which is a direct draw system. Okay. And our head retention was even better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This was amazing. Really you know, I, had, I had a local brewer who owns a pretty well-respected brewery around here, like, corner me during our friends and family being like, Dude, how so do you have to cocked all these? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So okay. what, what are you doing for this head? I'm like, what is the trick? Uh, carving slowly, I think, is part of it. Okay. Not blowing it off. A yeah, lot, yeah. A lot of brewers, for whatever reason, like, feed and bleed when they're carbonating and you're blowing off... Aromatics. Aromatics and also, like, foam retention properties. So taking what, more time. So that, but that's that's going to add a day or two days. What are we it's talking about? Yeah, what's slow? It's hours? Add like six hours. hours. Six yeah. hours. Yeah. So Four we were at the show before this. We were at uh, 14 Cannons mm-hmm. in um, Westlake Village. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same thing. He had this incredible head retention on his beers. And we, I asked him the same question. Yeah. He also brought up how he carbonates it um, yeah, carbonates, in line for him. Yeah. Carbonates so he's doing in line charts. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not an ingredient thing. You're not like adding no. some sort of carom foam. Like and there's nothing no, that like. No. Yeah. I, I, but he, I try to avoid crystal malts. Yeah, I know. Crystal, we do. Yeah. We the only time we use carom foam in a hoppy beer is we use it like a bag and a hazy pail just to get a little bit more body. But okay, so it's not an ingredient but, thing. It's literally just how no, you carbonate. Uh, the, the spirit, how you treat the beer. Well, I mean, okay. but you're saying maybe there is a slight. The, so this is two row malted wheat. Okay, but it's like in a you know. 2300 pound grist it's like 220 pounds of wheat okay it's but you're like, carving like in six hours uh, i wouldn't go that it, slow it, i guess yeah it depends but i mean we're just carving it up until it gets to the pressure and we're oh 
You're, yeah, you're saying we, six hours when, yeah. for the tank to get from zero to holding well, yeah, for yeah, the exactly. carb level? We're just okay. like slowly bumping up and yeah, we're not blowing off anything. Sure. Yeah. There, so keeping everything carb closed and yeah. Just you end up with being, tiny being, bubbles. Being, being gentle on transfers. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. So do you think that even filtering, which might not be the most gentle thing to do to a beer, would affect head retention? Yes. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, I don't, I don't want to add any more oxygen to our beer. Yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm certainly not suggesting yeah. that. That's, yeah. that's something we, that was a big investment that we did before opening was we purchased a C-Box before we started. What's the, I don't know. Uh, a D, basically, a DO and ah. carbonation. It's a... With the piercer, it's nearly thirty thousand dollar piece of to SLA. measure your dissolved yeah. oxygen yeah. and yeah. Yeah. carb okay. level appropriately, not, yeah. not the shake weight method. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I right. mean, we we had a zom that we inherited here, which would have been fine. It was the it was the do aspect of things. It's like I know I can make good beer off this brew house. I'm pretty sure I can make it good through tanks. Yeah, the candy line we inherited. I don't know. The beer. <laughs> That's what you're worried about. Yeah, it's like, uh-huh. and we're yeah. going to be starting to sell beer during just the pandemic, in just in cans during a lockdown. Like, we need to know. Like, yeah. this is not a candy line that I'm sure familiar with, and it has some design things that look a little strange to me. Like, I need to be able to verify what we're doing. Right, and you so. don't want those cans going bad like in three days. You know, yeah, so. correct. Yeah. yeah, keeping oxygen low is very, very important. Yeah, is there is there something inherent to a long draw system that reduces head retention? Like, is it just that in the line there's potentially some foaming that is yeah, just there's a, also a premature some, there's degradation? Also some transfers from different line sizes too that potentially could have some issues. And, hmm. Yeah, and, and over time, you know, those lines are just they're. they're we do our best to clean them, you know, but there's always going to be some amount of buildup or strip out from what that line looks like. And it's, it's not going to be the same thing as just a short draw that you can rip cut out, out and every, replace every six months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So well, it's kind of a cleanliness just inherent to the system. That's how I look at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if we were building out gradient, you know, from the ground up, we would not have long mm-hmm. draw. Mm-hmm. I think long draw as a brewery, long draw, is something I would avoid, especially if you're doing any sort of beer that has any sort of non-traditional beer ingredients. Uh, you can taint lines really easily, and when mm, your sure. long draw system is 60 feet underground, so oh, yeah, underground even it's underground. Yeah, yeah so this one is oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. as a bar owner, I wouldn't even <laughs> look at a location that wasn't direct draw. It was yeah. I. I didn't have 100%. too many standards. My standards are low in life and in business. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah, and that's, direct. That's a hard and fast rule. Yeah, direct draw only. <laughs> I yeah, I'm very jealous of my friends who have direct draw systems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of our previous brewery colleagues have a brewery around here, and they're like, yeah, we have like you know. Eight different like already yeah. pre-cut things like yeah, just ready to go out, rip mm. it out, yeah, mm. like Especially. cleaning canister wet. No, it's, <laughs> here's a line. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, the beer is great. Doctor Charlie Bamforth himself would be proud of you. Doctor Bubbles, <laughs> as he calls himself, <laughs> would be proud of you. We've got time for one more beer. Yep. I think if we've got it's, one, it's right? Yep. We, we it's do. Be very different. So. No break. Let's no. just get it go. Do we have it here? Yeah. Is yeah. it ready? Want me to? Here's going to be a few yeah. production. Yeah. Let's do that. Um, and I, I believe we're going to taste one of your barrel aged stouts. So yeah. You guys do have a barrel program here. We, we even. do. Have a, I mean, I worked at the brewery for so you have 10 to. years. Like, I yeah. was responsible for the barrel program at one point there. Yeah. Got it. So um, you almost started with a, with a barrel program. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we actually entered the spirit GBF this year. And that was a mistake. Or not GBF, World Beer Cup this year. And that was oh. a mistake. Yeah. Why? Why a mistake? Yeah. I. So I, I'm a GABF and World Beer Cup judge. Okay. And I've judged like experimental wood age, which is the category we put this in mm-hmm. before. And Whoa. a couple of years ago, um, we, a beer got a, a bronze that was like modern pastry stout, modern barrel aged pastry stout. So I'm like, eh, maybe. maybe times are changing. Um, but yeah, no. <laughs> I imagine uh, that we, category we got, has and, a, and you might, you might see why, but we got, um, well, taking a step back, uh, Brewers Association has different Take guidelines for this upcoming JBF where they've added a pastry style category. Ah, so that it's mm. different than the experimental. Yeah, so that's a new category that's coming up. But, okay. Um, yeah, we got knocked for... For too much. For, for being a modern Vogue beer of 
being too sweet, too thick, not carbonated. I see. In the experimental category? Yeah. 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 I thought experimental means <laughs> yeah. experimental. Right. Yeah, huh. ex- exactly. Um, well, it's all how you enter it. But you've it's, judged it's, it's a game. So yeah. you've seen that happen before. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Like okay. we've, I've, I've pretty much everything we've won, any sort of... Whew. Um, any sort of like important Smells award good. for which we have two GABF medals brewery of the year. We won Alpha King last year. Um, it's all that for too, hobby yeah. beer. Um, so you got to you got to round it out. Is what you're feeling? Yeah, but I mean, I, <laughs> I, got I, you. I, I, I like our beer. So yeah, this beer is called Germany by way of Texas. It's the second time we released this beer. Um, it is. I'm grabbing a bottle oh, when yeah. there's one available. Mark, do you mind? Can I see the bottle? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Germany um, by way of Texas. Yeah, so it's German chocolate cake inspired. Um, so yeah. it's a beer that spent two years in bourbon. Well, no, bourbon and rye barrels. Um, and I'm grabbing the ball because I can't remember for this batch. Uh, yeah, so... Um, yeah, the the barrels uh, for this one were uh, Stag Jr. and Thomas H. Handy Sazerac, so both Buffalo Trace. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Thomas H. Andy Sazerac part of the Buffalo Trace and Tea Collection. It's rye whiskey. So this beer was aged in those barrels. It was two physical barrels for a little bit over two years. And then we rack it out on into Bright Tank onto ingredients and recirculate. And it has uh, cacao nibs, uh, Texas Hill Country pecans, um, coconut. coconut, and vanilla. It tastes like a bit of German chocolate cake. Oh yeah, right. Instantly, yeah. Like, like uh, but the with enough alcohol heat to to help punch through that yeah. for you, mm-hmm. right? So that it's not just it's German. Fourteen yeah. percent. Is it fourteen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The we, heat's needed. At the beginning of of the sip, it was definitely a concerning level of silkiness, sweetness, mm-hmm. to where I'm like, oh no, how is this going to finish? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it does. It's like. <sighs> it is. Like, yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. That's the cake. That's right. That's the cake. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, for yeah, me, no. I, I get like a actual like sour cream, cream cheese frosting character out of it, which is mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Cr- crazy to actually get that yeah. character in the yeah. beer. For, for yeah. me, just um, the sort of um, chocolate expression from the cacao that we did is really, really nice and it's kind of sitting, sitting yeah. out a little bit right now. For me, it's so silky to me. I'm not sure that I've had like that silky level of chocolate yeah. in a long time. Mm-hmm. Is, it, w- is it some special secret, top secret cacao that you guys uh, No, I just need to look up what we used for that one. Um, <laughs> we get most Safeway? The... Have you heard of Safeway? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's out of Pennsylvania? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Safeway's kind of expensive. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. We'll usually do the bargain outlets. <laughs> yeah. um, there you go, yeah. yeah. yeah usually uh, we get our, our nibs from Chocolate Alchemy, actually. Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they do a good job. They're, my understanding, having worked with them for a while, is they're essentially the biggest supplier of green... Um, not green, sorry, of um, of non-processed. Like non- raw. Yeah, yeah they're, they basically supply most of the home chocolate makers in the U.S. with oh, actual cacao beans. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that is fantastic. Yeah. And with zero, you know, whenever I've had a beer like this, how long has this been barrel aged? Two By the years. Way, yeah, I'm always waiting for that, like... Uh, green pepper off flavor to raise its head. Mm-hmm. Like you get all the chocolate up front yeah. and then you're waiting for that shitty green pepper to come through. To me, and I get that more with coffee. This, yeah. you, go, coffee. You get that in chocolate? Yeah. 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 It, it can happen in chocolate. It is not here. It always eventually happens in coffee beers. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. is just delicious. They're just oh, fighting man. against it with coffee beers. <laughs> right. Yeah. Do, do you guys... Um, let it sit on the nibs and everything for a while, or or because uh, about you mentioned five days. Five oh, okay. days cold though, and that's after it's been in the barrel. Yes, you're you're doing all the flavoring after mm-hmm. barrel aging. Okay, yep. So you go from barrel back to stainless to, uh, to do that bar- barrel into bright tank. Yeah, into bright tank but, uh, for this beer specifically, bagging ingredients and then just recirculating for a couple days to a week, and then bottle. The, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, where does carbonation happen? Uh, in, in, the, in the bright. In the bright, okay. And we go low. I'm, we're so used to tasting, um, so used to tasting beers out of barrels. Um, that yeah. I actually kind of like it. I think it contributes to the mouthfeel of it. If you go more carbonation to me, it makes it sharp and it kind of 
doesn't really work with all the rest of the flavors. I could see that. If this was any more carbonated, I don't think I'd like it as much. Yeah, I don't always love them this low, but I think you're right about this beer. Yeah, we should, it, it we should judge World Beer Cup. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> give, you, give you some better points. Did you, is that, was that when you got knocked on? Low uh, carbonation. Low carbonation. Yeah. Too yeah. sweet. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, so the nibs for this one were uh, direct trade uh, Ugandan, a very specific origin, uh, hmm. some elite. Yeah, some leaky forest. Hmm. Wow, I've been there. These are great. <laughs> I haven't spent much time in the in RV. Yeah. In the, right, yeah. <laughs> in the I feel park. like we stopped by there on our way down here. <laughs> we might have. Actually, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This but is, I mean, delicious. a lot of what it, it's kind of odd uh, starting Radiant and being known for all these like fresh hoppy beers and lagers. I feel like industry wise, people, other brewers who I know know me for stuff like this right um Mm. i get texts and calls on almost a daily (laughs) basis about adjuncts like and by adjuncts i mean like cacao coconut to much more extreme things Mm. like that that has been a lot of my right history is playing around because i I was the innovation manager for the brewery so sure dealing with all this stuff so did you toast the coconut for this yourself this was a blend of toasted and raw Okay. Uh, and the toasted one, we did toast at the brewery because they have a commercial toasting. Oh, okay. Thing. The first time we tried to do toasted coconut, Jonas was convinced that he could do it in his home kitchen. I did. I, 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 I did, I I did do him, it. So. I, I looked at him skeptically. I hated and myself. I, and I said, are you really sure about this? How many barrels of this I, were you making at the time? Oh, I mean, same thing. It's like a, a barrel worth. So Yeah, it but, was, we're, but we're doing like close to a pound per gallon. Yeah. Yeah. Of okay. coconut. So. It takes a while. It takes a while. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'll, be, a home oven. I'll be back tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I got this. <laughs> He's like, oh, it'll only take like an hour or two. It was probably six, six plus hours. Later. Six hours, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, instead we visited our friends over at the brewery who have a, you know, full-size commercial oven. Right. And yeah. can do full sheet pans. Yeah, you, 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 don't, you don't think about the fact that a half sheet pan really means it's half the volume. Yeah. 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 You probably yeah. should think about that. But. You should, but I wouldn't have either, Jonas. <laughs> yeah, when you're doing like But a, you're not in good company. <laughs> I think we're toasting like 125 pounds. No, maybe only 75 for your... I forget. Yeah. But yeah, 75 pounds of coconut. <laughs> if you need a that's, hobby. That's a lot when you try to spread <laughs> that thin. I don't know. Yeah, that's, it's a lot of coconut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it, it got faster as I went on in terms of like, I definitely learned the process. You turned the boiler on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do, do you, so you kind of mentioned that you're not really known for these as radiant. Do you, do no, you, do you because, foresee a future though where you maybe are? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, for so we did do some non barrel aged stouts early on, and now we've kind of swapped over mostly to um, to barrel age. But it took us it took us the better part of uh, sixteen months for the barrel aged beer to kind of come into its own to where I was really like where I wanted it to be. So it was okay. almost like I got to make it the style of really big viscous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. the most part, like first time we released barrel aged beer was almost. You know, eighteen months to almost two years into sure into being around. So as it should be, because it's got to yeah. age. Yeah, right. No, so. I, but that I, was kind I, of the point with opening Radiant, and again, I mentioned over a number of years talking with Andrew about like what what you'd want to do if you opened up a brewery, and we always would say like we want to make the beers that we want to drink sure which is lagers and ipas or mm. hoppy beers at least i, I like drinking like this like a, you know, <laughs> that, that size, that size. Well, yeah. Like yeah three yeah. to four ounces mm-hmm. of, of this sort of beer like i actually really enjoy drinking three to four ounces and that's that's it. It. yeah what, what i really enjoy is like Lydia. having a couple of sips of that and then having the ipa and yeah it just makes those hops pop all that yeah. more like it's it's crazy how fruity it I just I could do that all to, night Jonas <laughs> yeah I just bounced back to the Pilsner and I'm really enjoying that yeah. also yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah this this style can just hang out um, mm. but yeah no I, I like I like these intense flavors and also the culinary side of things like trying to figure out how you create something in small doses sure are yeah. these available still uh, for sale at the tasting room? We have a few more bottles left. Yeah, the draft is all gone now. Um, and then we'll be releasing our next barrel-aged beer uh, next Friday. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
And will you be entering the barrel aged or the new pastry stout category uh, in this year's JBF? Probably not. What? I mean, we do have a tank that's open, and I, I have, feel like I you have might an idea to do have something. A, you might have a chance. <laughs> There's but, time. Yeah. Well, we so we registration started on Tuesday. So no, it's right now, they, so the last couple of years. Um, They've given you like initially like oh you can enter five beers and then usually they yeah. expand that later on to like seven. I've eight. seen that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah. So we have five beers on the schedule right now for GABF, none of which are stouts. Okay, um, all right. Well, I'm just giving you a little encouragement. Uh, I there, think there's, it's delicious. There's a thought in the back of my head of doing something either for GABF this year or World Beer Cup that would be Next year, s- yeah. maybe a stainless pastry stout. Um, Were you guys at World Beer Cup this year? Yeah, like uh, physically. Yeah, yeah Andrew I, I and Billy judged. went out for yeah. uh, oh, that's CBC, and he yeah, yeah. yeah. judged. Yeah, you know where it is next year, right? Yeah, yes, they, someone's gonna die. <laughs> yes, it's, yeah, it's in that's, Vegas. That's, that's the slogan. Yeah, yeah. 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 someone's <laughs> gonna die. Someone's Craft gonna Brewers Conference, make a T-shirt now. Someone's, someone's gonna, gonna die. die. Yeah. I think they could probably change it to Justin's gonna die, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe someone else. Yeah, yeah. It's my favorite. It's my like. I have a love hate relationship with Vegas, like mm. most people. I suppose. there's some good food out there. Yeah, and and at least three days in Vegas that seems like half too long. Right, or like twice as long as and, you should be there. And yeah. I usually go in early, and and then I have to stay to the end to do the awards too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely think I should not go in early. <laughs> no. so, so I have to judge. So I'm yeah. going to be. There oh, you're going to go week. early. All right, in solidarity for you, Andrew, I'm going to go early. <laughs> yeah, All right. Justin's <laughs> definitely going to die, going to die in die. Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they go to Nashville and Vegas. What's so good? How yeah, well, how do you top that? <laughs> New <If> they... Orleans? <laughs> Yes, I would yeah. love that. <laughs> Tell me it's going to be New Orleans. That'd be great. Do you, you all need to start going to more places with like open container? Exactly. Let's go, let's go Rio during Carnival. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's getting go Rio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you volunteer for the experimental stout category or uh, barrel age category? So when we're not entering, I love judging that category. Mm. Yeah. I can I, imagine that there are definitely some highs to that category. Yeah. Well, if you if you get to judge metal round, it's oh it's okay incredible. Wow. Okay, sure. It's, so there's been I've judged experimental and before there's uh, wood age experimental and mm-hmm. I've judged wood age experimental for metal rounds and I've had some of the most fantastic beers, mm-hmm. like just mind blowing beers. Oh sure. And, How about you, the and, usually, and usually some really <laughs> yeah. really long discussions for. Awarding oh. medals, like oh sure, like you'll have twelve beers, or it's usually twelve beers, like presented in front of you, and we'll get it down to like the top four or five in like t- ten fifteen minutes, and there'll be like another hour and a half <laughs> yeah. multiple uh, repours to either figure out like yeah because you're not three ones or yeah because they're probably so different and you're they're judging so them against yeah. themselves. Yeah. It's like debate team all over again. Hmm. No, oh like, now you're speaking my judging language. Judging experimental <laughs> a few years ago, uh, judged. Um, his metal round. It was a pretty awesome judging group too, like some very big names, and the beers were so diverse. The one that ended up getting gold was a was I can't remember the name of the beer, but it was Firestone's um, Method Champenois Sour, okay. and it won like the week before they released it. And uh, I'll take a step back for people who don't know judging process. The only way you know what beer you've judged is if it wins a medal yeah. right after. it's completely yeah, it's completely sure. blind sure like, yeah. so you find out you only are able to find out like who got gold silver bronze yeah um the beer that got bronze or beer that got silver was um like a pinot noir co-ferment from i think ale song or something like that mm-hmm. and then the beer that got bronze that year was the most incredible thing comes in the little cup it says you know experimental and then underneath it, it's because you add additional information. If it's experimental. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It says cream ale fermented with salsa. Okay. <laughs> what? So <laughs> crystal clear yellow beer. Good head retention, surprisingly. Yeah. Hmm. Take it up to your nose. Smells like completely like pico de gallo with a corn tortilla chip. Wow. wow. Like tomatoes, onions, cilantro. All uh, there. Hmm. Pepper, like chili pepper, yeah. and like corn, mind blowing. Wow! Yeah, and there there was actually a pretty big debate at the table whether it should not be an experimental because it had chilies in it. Like it was a chili, <laughs> like it was a chili beer because any beer with chilies <laughs> needs to be a chili beer. Oh, That's the debate. 
but, but yeah, it was the entire some, salsa. There's some small brewery in uh, Colorado, and they they had also won an experimental before with a cream ale with beets. Okay. And I like trolled their Instagram and was like, saw them juicing beets. I have no idea how they made that beer. Yeah. <laughs> how they made the salsa beer, but they did, and they won a medal. Yeah. yeah. It was. So that, that would so, be fun. Yeah, so a pretty crazy diverse lineup. And, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. It sounds like fun. Wood Age Experimental, there's some pretty cool beers. Yeah. Judging metal around the It sounds way. difficult, but super yeah. fun. At least interesting. I, I love judging catch all categories. Okay. Because it's, it, it stops being so much about the style and it's more about hedonistic. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. To an extent. Yeah. Especially once you get to metal. To the metal table. table. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to nitpick right. style as much. That makes sense. And you get a much more diverse series of beers. Yeah. Like judging and, metal and the round. better ones. Yeah, and the, and the better ones. Right. <laughs> judging metal round for, like, Hellas is difficult. Oh, yeah. I bet. See, I would think that that's more of a debate, even, because they're just mm. so close. Yeah. They're, at, once you get to metal round, the beers are so freaking good. Yeah. And it's all, like, very strictly. GABF and World Beer Cup judging is very strictly to style. Okay. Yeah. So. So and I've never judged at that level, but in, in the little bit of judging I've done in kind of local competitions and stuff, I need a bunch of tastes too, especially if it gets close. Uh, I, I can't, like, I have a very short memory. So I'm like, I need another taste. I need another taste. This isn't just a drinker in me. It's me trying to do a good job, right? So this is Justin's ju- judging glass. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, pint, pint glass. Yeah, yeah. every time somebody says, well, aren't you picking up this? I'm like, well, I need another taste. Let <laughs> yeah. me see. Mm-hmm. And so I'm a terrible judge. I take a really long time because yeah. of that. I have to keep going back to it. Um, so I can imagine when they get all close like that in, in, a, in a Hellas category or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. At least yeah. in Mel Round, you can get repours. Okay, um, yeah, yeah. Which I usually advocate for once we get it to like the top four or five. Sure, sure. So. All right, gentlemen. Well, listen, uh, that is about our time today. But this beer has been so fantastic. I appreciate it. Yeah, Andrew, yeah. you're doing good work here. Thank you. Uh, Jonas, thank you for having us and for all the good work you're doing here. Um, I love the entire product that you guys have. You thank guys, you. You built a great brewery. Um, I, see, I see a bright future <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> full of light and so, positivity. Yeah. Um, and I see more of those uh, 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 bottle-conditioned, barrel-aged beers in your future, yes, too. So. I think, well, yeah. I think you'll like to known. exist, there must be dark. There you go. Yeah. It's, oh, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's the, the whole name of your program, I think it should be. <laughs> May the sun the never best, set on your brewery. For, for a barrel program, yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, another great stop for us, Beardy. Yes. Um, you're, you're doing pretty good over there. Oh. I think, like, as a co-host, you know. Oh, yeah. You want to keep me around for another seven years? Um, well, at least another three shows we have. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I just suggest if you're yeah. going to go with the um, Justin and the, the Justin Beard, Beard the show, you, yeah. you need to get some like sound effects. Ah, you'd like, like, make, make a true like morning drive time. Some morning zoo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think you're right. Justin and the Beard. Yeah. Air horn. <laughs> Traffic and weather on the nines. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's we need a slinky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. We are having a good time on this uh, road show. Our next show will be uh, from Bagby. Not a live show, nice. but we're going to yeah, Bagby. Nice. I think it's also Bagby Beer Company. Yes. I always have to look that stuff yep. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so versus Brewing. Versus Brewery. brewery. Yeah. Versus, yeah. 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 Yes. Hopefully Bagby, there'll Bagby be good beer, beer there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure yeah. we're going to have a pretty decent chance. You'll be in the Yeah. Say hi to Jeff. It's also going to be a very laid back show. Jeff's a very laid back person. So I'll be hanging out with him in Oceanside and then... Uh, after that, we'll do another live show um, with Modern Times and Modern Times slash Maui. We're going to be interviewing the CEO of Craft Ohana, it is now, mm-hmm. which is now the, the parent company of um, Maui Brewing Company, Maui Distilling, Maui Seltzer, and Modern Times. Garrett's building mm-hmm. himself an empire. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to get the lowdown on that. Couldn't be a nicer guy. Yeah. 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 He's, guy. He's really great. And he's letting us uh, just camp out at his warehouse. <laughs> Which is like we're going full old school can down by the river yeah. Yeah. at Garrett's warehouse. And basically. apparently Blink 182 is playing across the street. So yeah. his whoa. warehouse is across whoa. the street from the arena. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to get to listen to a Blink, oh, a Blink 182 the, show. Yeah, the modern times like. Barrel yeah, the barrel. Yeah, okay, yeah that's yeah. really close. Yeah, yep. it's right there. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> we Google mapped it and it's like yep. warehouse. <laughs> Bunch of um, other RVs parked on the street. Yeah, <laughs> ours will yeah, luckily, ours will be behind the gate. A luckily. bunch of new friends and, and girls, <laughs> girls, girls, girls. <laughs> yeah. Beardy calls new friends. Uh, all 
All right. Well, thank you for hanging out with us, uh, listeners and, and folks who came out to, to see the show. Uh, thank you to Radiant for, for hosting us. It's uh, very cool to be here and get to talk with you guys. The beer is just so good. We're going to stay and have some more. Awesome. Um, we'll see you next time here on the show. Thanks to all of our sponsors, 21st Amendment, more beer, Beersmith Brewing Software. Go to beersmith.com and get your free 21-day trial of their brewing software. Williams Brewing Company, who's been with me since almost day one. Just a great little brewing company that you can get your ingredients sent right to your house. Um, thanks to all of our sponsors. And we'll see you next time here on Justin and the Beard. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> Take care of yourselves and your beard. <laughs> <laughs>